Hello everybody, this is Andrew Tice from Integrated Power Washing here in Warner Robins, Georgia and today we are in a little bit of a different place. Uh, I was approached about a couple months ago about doing some gravestones for a very special family here in middle Georgia, the Walker family. Uh, they were a instrumental part of the industrialization of the peach industry here in, here in middle Georgia, Georgia in general I believe. Uh, and we're going to be cleaning some gravestones for this family. It's an honor to be able to do that. And uh, the reason I'm making a video is because I want to kind of bring you guys along with me to show you uh, how we're going to do it because it's not a typical pressure washing job. In fact, it's not a pressure washing job at all. Uh, this is a very delicate process and I wanted to uh, kind of show how it's done correctly, responsibly, to keep some of these graves that are 150, 160 years old uh, completely intact with no possible uh, even possibility of damage to do and what way we do that is we use a special solution that's what we call non-ionic and uh, it's called D2 it's made by a company in Texas and it's a very 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 long drawn-out process I'll probably be here for most of the day uh, we have 19 sites to clean and then the surrounds uh, but I just wanted to kind of show you this is what we're gonna do uh, it is a process. It's not something you just slap on and rinse off uh, and no pressure either. So uh, you might think cemetery stones are granite. They've been here for 100 years or strong. You can put anything on them. That is not the case. Uh, from my research, bleach, which would kill this mold fairly quickly and fairly easily, will actually the salt in the sodium hypochlorite in the bleach will do some long-lasting damage to these uh, to these older stones. Um, now these aren't very old, but these over here, like I said, they're marble uh, and they are older. So, just... okay. Now, as we get started, there's a few things you'll need. Uh, you'll need a pump sprayer. You'll need your D2. Uh, now D2 is undiluted. Uh, you apply it undiluted. But what you want to do is you want to wet the surface first. And what that does is is that keeps the D2 wet as you're applying it. It, uh, it allows it to stay there longer so it doesn't dry out real fast and, and, and then you're out of luck. So, so we've got brushes um, of different uh, pressures, I guess stiffnesses and uh, sizes. I've got a couple more in the truck too that I'll be using as well. But the application process is you wet the stone, you apply the soap, you brush, you let it set. And this is going to take a lot of patience because I have 19 of these bad boys to do. This whole site over here and this whole site over here. So the bricks back there. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to go ahead and get to work. Okay, and as you're going along here, uh, obviously time is your biggest asset when doing something like this. You have to let it do its work. This is a very light chemical. It's not heavy like bleach or a soap or a degreaser. This is something that takes time. So what we've done is we've applied, we've agitated and we've reapplied and now we're kind of letting it sit and do its work. It's, uh, you'll see the, the biological turns a light brown similar to when a potassium hydroxide uh, hits it. Uh, I don't know how far we're going to go here but I'm going to keep, keep uh, scrubbing and agitating and also, too, is I got a pump sprayer to apply it to pre-soak, so I'm not running my machine for hours and hours for no reason. So we're going to pre-wet with a pump sprayer here, and then we're going to apply our soap, which is over here. And we got those in two different pump sprayers. Make sure we don't mix those up, and uh, we'll let it do its work. I have done this before, but not to anything so old and not to anything so soiled. As you see, these things are pretty black. Uh, they sit underneath some pretty pretty nasty trees that are doing as you can see from the color difference between this one and this one uh, they're def it's definitely doing its work and then obviously down here um, at our our white one it is definitely doing its work it takes time but it is doing the job and after a lot of scrubbing and I mean a lot of scrubbing uh, this is what we're left with uh, we do have some still stuck in there uh, there's not much we can do about that what we're gonna do is gonna post treat with a little bit of this D2 and then walk away um, and that's how you handle that and it takes a little time for it to work but it will work uh, this one here turned out great this one here turned out great uh, this one here turned out great this one here I'm on my this is these are the first set that I did uh, this one here what I'm gonna do is I rinsed it off I'm gonna let it dry up a little bit and then I'm gonna shoot it again with the soap 
and then scrub some more scrub some more I've been here for about an hour now and I've got three of 19 done so this is going to be a long process uh, these here they turned out pretty darn good I went ahead and surface cleaned the pad that's just a concrete pad um, but uh, yeah when I did these obviously you can tell on the top here these here didn't turn out uh, extraordinary but better than they were um, and uh, when you're doing this kind of stuff it's good to set the customer uh, the customers expectations up correctly um, these are hundred plus year old stones with hundred plus year old dirt on them uh, to maintain the the essence of the stone, I, I, the, the, the quality of the stone to not compromise, there we go, we're not compromising the actual stone while removing the mold and mildew uh, is a delicate process. So you're not going to be able to remove all of it because it's better to leave the stone intact and leave a little bit of mold than deteriorate the stone while cleaning it. Uh, if you understand that logic, that's basically how I took this job on quality of the stone takes precedence over removing the dirt um, because these are relics this is a, an, an extremely old set of stones uh, 1924 is the time that that person excuse me 1824 is the year that that person died and uh, 1886 is this one so gives you an idea of how old these are okay now when pressure is concerned that's a big thing that uh, a lot of guys always worry about in this business I told you this isn't a pressure washing job. This is a, my tip I'm using for this is a 2515. At the tip here, it's shooting about 600 PSI. About every inch we go out, we lose about 100 PSI. So at, you know, at a foot away, it's, you know, maybe 50, 60 PSI. You know, so we're, we're really just kind of you know, rinsing this stuff off. We're not, we're not putting a lot of pressure right down onto the, the, the concrete because we don't want to take any of the surface away. Um, so this first row is done uh, for all intents and purposes. There's a little left there. Like I said, I'm going to leave a little of the D2 to, behind uh, on it, uh, and it does its time. Excuse me, it does its work over time. So uh, there we go. I want to take a moment and talk about the solution I'm using. This is called D2, non-toxic and no scrubbing necessary. That is not correct, but hey, uh, I know I'm doing it right because uh, the website that these guys have uh, I don't know what it is if you just google it they'll uh, they'll be able to tell you um, there's a video of them and they're scrubbing so uh, this is the stuff um, safe 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 uh, again I can't I can't stress that enough when doing any kind of old old restoration like this um, but you can see what it does to the solution you can tell that it's you know it takes a long time but it is doing work on that mold and mildew there which is really cool because I'm a bleach guy I've used bleach more on stuff than anything else and this stuff here is not bleach and look at it work so thank you and it's now near midday and I've got all the stones on this side cleaned uh, these back here they dried not looking great um, gonna apply a little D2 walk away uh, the white ones look very bright and good ones over here look good um, I've started over here can't really tell real well yet but this one's done and this one's not so I haven't done the, the stones here but I've done the family marker here but not here uh, if we take a step around here maybe you can see a little better with the Sun on it uh, yeah there we go that one's done that one's not we're about to do this one so long process uh, but such a cool process um, this D2 stuff is really is good stuff it works well uh, it does the job it takes a long time takes a lot of scrubbing but it does do the job and the job is done uh, there's a few lines here on these stones from the post treatment of the D2 that I applied uh, the company tells you to go ahead and kind of wet and forget it with uh, the D2 um, just so stuff like this um, the black stuff deep down within that D2 will sit in there and it actually adheres to that mold and mildew and kills it I guess uh, that's what they say these here are pretty bad I'm hoping that that post treatment does something because these did not turn out all that well um, over here everything looks a lot better 
but still uh, some mold and mildew deep in those stones. So again, I hope that post-treatment works. But all in all, I would say this is a success. Uh, the surround turned out great. Um, I did just clean that with sodium hypochlorite just because it is just a concrete bumper uh, marker, if you will. Um, one little last note on these, I believe they're marble headstones, you'll see a red tinge to some of these areas here. Uh, and what that is, is that's that D2 working on that, that biological so that when it does rain, that will wash away. So thanks for joining me. It's been quite a process. Uh, this is Andrew Tice from Integrated Power Washing doing some uh, cemetery plot gravestone restoration. Hey guys, a uh, couple of takeaways from the job today, uh, doing the gravestone cleanings. Uh, job time was a little over five hours, five hours and 20 minutes. Uh, it took me about as long as I thought it was, maybe a little bit less. I realized at the end that scrubbing wasn't, it was necessary, but you didn't have to scrub multiple times. Uh, putting it on the dwell was more important than the scrubbing, uh, or just as uh, influential on the mold as the scrubbing was. And uh, one other thing about this D2 stuff, uh, there is a no scrubbing option. What you can do and is uh, you have a couple of different methods here. Uh, let me get into the couple of different methods here, though. Uh, the one is the no scrub and no rinse method, which is basically just applying it and then walking away. Uh, and I guess if that's your personal project, that would work. But for a customer like that, I can't ask them to wait three or four months uh, and expect to get paid. So uh, that's why I used option B, which is immediate results method, which is what we did today. So uh, good stuff. Coverage. Uh, coverage. Uh, those gravestones there, I called the company, sent them pictures, and they said I needed uh, at least three gallons. Four would do it. Uh, three would do it. Four would, would be a good thing to have. I have about eight ounces left, so I used all of that four gallons. And I'm glad I had four gallons because if I didn't, I definitely would have ran out. So uh, call the company if you are interested in using this D2 for uh, any project at all. It doesn't have to be uh, gravestones. This is just what they market it as because of the nature of the age of the stones. But if you're dealing with an older building or an older brick building or something like that, this is safe for any surface at all. Um, it, it, there's great instructions. I don't know what's in it. They did not send me an SDS or an MSDS. Uh, any information on the on the product, so I don't know what's in it. Um, there is some warnings here, but it's pretty mild stuff. The smell is is pleasant. It's not unpleasant anyway. Um, it's it's good stuff. So uh, if you are interested in it, uh, Google it. Like I said, that's the you know, best way to get a hold of the company. They do have a lot of great information. And uh, again, thanks for joining me on that uh, that project.